I do like the cheap Chinese strings of LED lights, not because they're particularly pretty, I mean they are quite pretty, but because they're always so pleasingly dangerous. So let's investigate a set. This one uh, wasn't too expensive. Well, say it wasn't too expensive. These used to be really super cheap, but you can get equivalent sets from prominent uh, suppliers in your country that comply with local electrical regulations, possibly with a low voltage power supply. And that is the better option, even if it costs a bit more, as we shall explore and find out with this set. So for your instant gratification, I'm going to turn this on. I'm already spotting it. It's only two channels, the, the cheapskates. But uh, it comes with a British square pin plug, a non-compliant one, because uh, it has uh, the sleeved pin here, the earth pin, which it shouldn't have. But I shall plug it in. It does suggest that maybe we're very lucky and they sent us a 220 vo uh, volt version instead of the previous versions I've had that they sent 120 volt and they emitted lots of smoke. It was very exciting. It just ruined the Christmas atmosphere a bit, though. So it's the horrible controller that you'd expect that uh, you click through the modes and the, does that one that looks as though it's a static mode, but then it starts fading out after a while just to dupe you. Uh, I think that's it this time. Uh, and for your gratification, I shall show you these in the dark, noting actually that they're using the sort of golden LEDs. That's new for the... Uh, and uh, are the red ones phosphor based? Not really sure. They're quite nice colours. That is different to the crappy yellow ones they used to do. But anyway, I'm going to dim the lights down now. So one moment, I'm just going to do that right now. Oh yeah, very bright and colourful. Not too much shimmer either, though these will almost certainly be uh, flickering. Uh, well, of course, when you actually use the mode, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to torture you by showing the usual stroby flashy modes. I'm a bit disappointed these lights were supposed to be, each strand was supposed to be a different colour, but they've actually just uh, put them in a single colour each time. Oh, I'll tell you what as well. It's not just going red, yellow, green, blue. It's actually going blue, uh, red, yellow, green, blue, yellow, blue, blue, green. It's just random colours. Maybe just what they, they put in at the time. That's very strange. But anyway, I'm going to bring the light back, so watch your eyes. And let's explore. So the reason you can see a slight shimmer, possibly, if it's not taken out by the processing, is because these are actually being run directly across the mains with just resistors in series. The first few LEDs in the string will have uh, resistors in them dissipating a bit of power. And the worst mode you can set them on... I can almost, almost smell the plastic right now. The worst mode you can have them on is static, although that's what I'd call the best mode. Oh, that's a rather scary one with a bit of wire stuffed up the end of it. Shouldn't really be handling these. They're dodgy. Oh, I know why they've done it that style. Uh, but the static mode puts the most uh, stress on those resistors at the beginning of it, and sometimes they just melt right through the insulation. That's not good. But anyway, the first test we want to do is on the plug here. We want to see if the fuse is connected and if it's in the correct pole. So the first test is to take the fuse out. It's a 13 amp fuse, it says, whether it's a real fuse or not. Let's plug it in without the fuse. They lit. So the fuse isn't connected. Uh, the earth pin has that uh, plastic space on it, which uh, it's not so critical in this instance, since it's really just being used to open the, the shutters for the live and neutral. But it, in, if that plug was used on an actual earth appliance, it would not be good because it wouldn't make a connection. Now the fuse. Hold on, I'm just going to crush this fuse. Let's just grab a pair of tires. Let's grab a vice. I shall crush the fuse. It should be full of sand. If it's a real fuse, HRC British compliant fuse. Crunchy, crunchy. Any sand? Uh, no, there is no sand, so it's also a fake fuse. Not that it really matters, because it turns out it wasn't actually connected anyway. Good, that's what we want from crappy LED lights from, well, grey imports. eBay and Amazon have done a wonder for electrical safety standards. Right, okay, next thing. Have they secured the little cover against being pulled off by an over-exuberant child? No, they haven't. So uh, that's not good about this? Is this secured? It's usually better. Mm, it's okay. It took a, it took an adult to get that off. So here's the controller. It's got the usual little strip, uh, the sort of sill mounting uh, circuit board in here. I think I may have destroyed that. I'm not really that bothered about it. 
and it's got two little MOSFETs and a bit of circuitry, just the most basic stuff. Uh, and uh, it has a bridge rectifier here. The mains comes in, gets rectified to uh, unsmooth DC, and then it gets switched by these little uh, thyristors, and that's what flashes the LEDs on and off. Okay, right. Let's investigate along this string and see if there's any surprises. It's not uncommon just to find bare wires along them. But as it is, the wire itself is extraordinarily thin. Some of it's, like, unbelievably thin. It must make it very hard for them to actually manufacture this stuff. Okay, this is tied in a knot. Right, tell you what, I'm just going to pause momentarily while I untie the knot. Okay, I have done some investigation. Let's explore. So it turns out there's two circuits. There's the small stars and there's the big stars. I may have broken the controller slightly, but that's okay. We shall explore it later. Uh, the circuit with the small stars has five LEDs in the small star. I'll zoom down this. Five LEDs in the small star and then two in series. And the top one of those has a resistor built in. So because there are effectively um, six sets of these, is that right? Yes, times six. And this is also times six. Then there are 42 LEDs in series. So they've got uh, five resistors, six resistors, should I say, uh, limiting the current to, well, we'll measure it. But it has to drop, if there's 42 LEDs in series, roughly, say, three volts each, or are being generous, 120, it's dropping about half the main supply voltage here in the UK. And it'll be different. They'll use different arrangements in America. For the 10, uh, for the large stars, they've got three uh, LEDs coming down the string. And then they've got 10 in the star itself. And one, there's a resistor where I've shown the little boo, boo, boo lines. That's where the resistor is in there. Can I show you one? They're very small. They are excruciatingly small resistors. They're, they're too small to see. That's how big they are. It's not great. They are 8 watt resistors. The cheapest they could get. So the construction inside the sleeves is the typical. You've got the LED with what they call a uh, concave lens. That means that the light comes up and it spreads out sideways. It gives very wide viewing angle. Very common Christmas light lens. And they've got a little plastic sort of H-beam that if this is the LED viewed from the top, well, from the bottom actually, the H-beam goes in like this between the connections and then they solder the wires on and that just stops them touching together. They then put a bit of heat shrink over it and shrink it down and that is it. That's your strain relief. It's not strain relief. These things are usually very easy to pull apart. At the end, well, and the others, uh, the ones with resistors, they put the resistor down in the string. Oh, that's the final one. That's no good. Uh, they've got the resistor in the string and it's just on one side uh, snugged into that little H-beam plastic H-beam and then the heat shrink put over it again. So there's actually less strain relief there on the resistor ones. The resistors are also usually overdriven, but in this one, they weren't getting too hot. They were getting to 50 degrees Celsius, which is okay. That's hot for electronics, but it's okay. Uh, the other uh, one that there is one connection in this, it's when all the strings come to the end, they go to, onto the common positive, which runs, basically one common positive runs to the end, and then it loops through all the lights on the way back. Uh, the two strings then goes back to the controller, it switches the negative. Um, because of that, one at the end has an extra pudding joint of three wires going up the inside, a uh, big blob of solder, and then they put another layer of heat shrink over that. And to be honest, it feels very spiky. The, uh, any spikes in the solder will potentially push through the heat shrink, and uh, any heat, if this resistor heats up too much in some sets, it will melt through the heat shrink. The controller itself is a classic little circuit. The main supply comes in, gets converted through a bridge rectifier to DC, but not smoothed. The DC feeds, in this case, in the UK, it will be plus 240 volts. Uh, and it will be full wave rectified, but not smooth. That's why it doesn't go up to the peak voltage. And this will be, for the circuit reference, zero volts, but it's actually referenced to the mains. It then goes through this awful resistor. It's a 120K resistor, and uh, it... Uh, 
It charges up this capacitor which powers the unit, and the unit obviously has something like a Zener diode or something in it to actually cap the voltage. It's just a very minimalist approach. This resistor was at 150 degrees Celsius above ambient. I'm guessing the controller is universal, 120, 240, and in the UK, they get smoking hot inside. That will almost certainly char up after a while, that resistor, I should think, and may flash over. Uh, so that provides the current limited supply to the flasher. The flasher has a little button going to the zero-volt rail to actually uh, toggle through the effects. And there's also a 5.1 megohm resistor going from the live, sampling the mains frequency for the timing. Uh, the... Switching is done through between two to four little thyristors. Thyristors are devices that when you trigger them at very low current, they will latch on. So that's their main advantage. They're suitable for switching high voltages and they've got a very low turn on current, which is needed here given the limited supply here. And each string then is composed of multiple resistors and then multiple LEDs. And that's how it can flash them backwards and forwards. Um, I shall show you how to bypass that and stop it flashing, but keep in mind, the resistors will get hot in the string and also uh, it's electrically dangerous anyway, so it's probably not a good idea. If you've got a set of these for Christmas, my apologies if I'm scaremongering you. Uh, it's not really intentional, just... Yeah, I, I don't know what to say about this. Bin them is what i got to say about that. Uh, here's the controller. Let's measure the current going through the strings because I did notice the LEDs in the strings were not getting too hot. So I'm going to turn the power on with the controller open. Note that this is dangerous. That is now live at mains voltage. I'm going to put my meter to current and I'm going to put it to DC current. Well, let's put it into the lower sen the higher sensitivity range and turn it round to 20 milliamps DC. And then I'm going to Pull out this little controller. Actually, you know what? I'm going to unplug that and I'm going to unbury it from the LEDs because it's decided to get cluttered LEDs. So, if I go down here, am I going to be able to brighten this picture up a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. If I zoom down, I can show you. There's the bridge rectifier. It converts it from AC to DC. There's the button. There's the very, very hot capacitor, resistor there charging this capacitor. The little chip with a blob on it, which is just the way they do these. And the little sense resistor for getting the timing. And then the two tiny little uh, thyristors. I shall plug this in again. Note, do not do this with the power on. It's, uh, it's dangaroos. Uh, only one channel is working because I've already burst it, but I think I've pulled one of the leads out. Uh, I'm going to bridge across that, and it should bring on one circuit continually. It's bring on the little stars, and the current is, well, almost 666. That seems appropriate. It is 666. That's appropriate. 6.6 .6 milliamps. Uh, and the current through, presumably, the big stars... It's five milliamps. That's not bad current. It means that the resistors aren't going to get super duper smoke in the heart. Ew, right here. Okay. So, uh, as always, when you've been using your meter, switch it back from the current range over to the volts and ohms range. Always remember to do that. Don't leave it accidentally in the current range or it will go bang. So, if you wanted to make these stay on, the little thyristors here have the long pin, one pin going up to the little chip there. But the other two pins, you can actually just bridge them out. You can do it in the back. Technically speaking, you could just take the one common positive lead and then twist the other two negative leads together that, that are switching the strings. You could just basically tack it across the pads to go across that bridge rectifier. Um, so what else can I say? Oh, yes. So now I've uh, demonstrated that, let's give it the pull test. Is it going to pull out easily? Yes, it is. It didn't take much. If that's snagged in a branch you are putting it in a tree, that's much lower pull strength and it's exposed live connections. You may think I was using excessive force. That was not excessive force. Uh, there, there's no strain relief in these. The wire is what I'd call single insulated. It's not compliant. It's not safe. And although it says use, usable outdoors, because these have got a little heat shrink sleeve, but they're open at this end, the water does wick up, they corrode inside, but more importantly, they form an electrical path and you can actually get a shock off the back of these. So I wouldn't handle them outdoors in the wet. I wouldn't handle them at all, full stop. They're terrible. So let's let's sum this up. Um, smoking hot resistors in the controller that is very easy to pull open, even with child strength. Uh, plug that has a fake fuse, uh, but the fuse isn't connected anyway and it's got a sleeve pin, so there's like three safety violations in that already. 
uh, that resistor get, gets absolutely smoking hot in there. Uh, there's no strain relief. The wire is not insulated to a thick enough standard for mains voltage. In short, what I'm saying here is if you've got some of these, by all means, you could unclip these little stars and things and use them as low voltage lights if you want to salvage them. But really, don't buy the cheap grey import lights from eBay. If you're going to buy Christmas lights, get them from... Uh, a local supplier, uh, like say for instance Asda and Walmart, to use just examples of what I mean by a prominent brand that has to protect their reputation, preferably the ones if you're using them outdoor that have the little plug-in low voltage transformer. That way, nobody's going to get an electric shock and they're not going to go on fire. And that includes uh, shocks to pets as well as kids and, and adults. So um, yeah, they're not great, but they're, they're still on sale. I'm really surprised they're still on sale. eBay clearly doesn't give a toss.